another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games and more people to see themselves in the games they play? No matter how good of a gamer you are, at some point in your life you have probably needed at least a little bit of help to get through a video game. Maybe it's that one boss in Dark Souls that you just can't seem to beat, you can't get the timing right down, you needed someone to just get through this one fight for you. Or maybe it was seven and you needed help doing a tricky jump in Mario 64. No matter what it is, at some point in your life you've probably needed someone to help you get through that one tricky part of a game that you just can't seem to get past. Now, in that moment when you needed help progressing in a game, even if you knew you needed help, it can suck to have to hand your controller off to someone else. Even if you know you need a bit of help, the action of handing a controller over can feel like defeat. It's not a great feeling. However, Microsoft has an accessibility feature designed around this exact kind of scenario that isn't discussed very often. It's called Copilot Mode. So today we're going to talk in some depth about Copilot Mode. What it is, how it functions, and how it can help disabled players keep playing video games without ever having to hand over the controller to someone else. Originally added to the Xbox One as part of an update in early 2017, Copilot Mode basically allows an Xbox console to assign two controllers to the same player, effectively having them both recognised as the same controller at the same time. This is done at a system level by Microsoft, so game developers don't have to put any effort at all into making it work with their games. Every game, first or third party, released on Xbox consoles supports this feature. So what makes Copilot Mode so special? Well, it allows for a huge amount of customization in how people with differing needs play video games, that can be useful for everything from helping new gamers get used to our medium, to creating bespoke controller setups that allow disabled gamers to play games unassisted. Let's start by looking at some of the non-disability focused applications of Copilot Mode, which may be of interest to a wider audience of gamers. Have you ever had a younger relative who wants to play a video game and is old enough to know if they have control of the action, but not yet skilled enough to get past a specific bit of the game? It's not unusual to see a kid get frustrated when they can't progress, but not want to give up the controller completely to receive help? With Copilot Mode, you can pick up a second controller, offer to play the game together, and seamlessly help nudge them over that tricky jump without having to take their controller away. Similarly, if you're trying to introduce video games to someone who has never played them before, dual analogue controls and a huge number of buttons to keep track of can be a barrier to entry to the medium. Copilot mode allows a second player to take care of some of the trickier functions, like controlling the camera or managing quick time events, while the new player can get to grips with the basics of interacting with the world, with a few fewer things to manage. However, where Copilot Mode really shines is as an accessibility feature for disabled players. It's implemented at a system level, which means that even if a third party game on Xbox hasn't been designed with accessibility features in mind, Copilot Mode offers up a bunch of different ways to customise your experience that can help to make it accessible, even where the developers themselves have not made that effort. It's a situation where some third-party games are just more accessible on Xbox, even if the developer made no additional effort, because of this system level feature, and I think that's really interesting. So, let's look at some of the methods of play that Copilot Mode opens up for disabled players, and why I would love to see Sony and Nintendo adopt similar system level modes for their consoles as well. Firstly, and perhaps most obviously, Copilot Mode allows for two people to divide up in-game actions between them. This might sound obvious, but this allows for circumventing a lot of common accessibility issues in games. Let's say you're playing an action game that features no option to disable quick time events or button mashing sequences that you personally cannot complete. You can hand a second controller to a friend, play the game 100% solo, and have a friend there simply to jump on any quick time event moments as and when they pop up. You don't have to scramble to throw the controller to a friend with zero warning, they've already got the controller, ready to do that one bit of the game that the developers didn't give you an option to disable. If a game itself doesn't let you avoid an aspect of that game, and you have a friend around, 
you can simply give someone else responsibility for those actions. Beyond that, Copilot mode allows disabled players the option to spread their controls out into positions they may find more comfortable to reach. With a single regular controller, your buttons are all set in static fixed positions, and if the position your button is in isn't accessible, you're out of luck. Copilot mode allows players to spread their buttons and sticks out, change their orientation, and with system level button remapping, even change their functions independently. If you can't use one of your hands to operate one of your analogue sticks, you could place a second controller on the floor and use your foot to move that stick. You could place a secondary controller sideways on the table and map your triggers to its face buttons. There's no end to the ways you could orient and map a second controller to offer new ways to access certain button inputs, which allows for a lot more player setup control. Copilot mode is particularly useful on Xbox consoles as well, because of the fact that the Xbox Adaptive Controller exists. A modular controller that allows for first and third party peripherals to be hooked up to create custom disability focused controller layouts. By allowing players to tell the Xbox that their regular Xbox controller and their adaptive controller are one and the same controller, players are able to integrate their existing controller into their accessible setup and in some cases avoid purchasing extra peripherals needlessly. If you're a gamer who, for example, simply can't use your controller's triggers, you could use the regular controller as normal, then the two big buttons on the base adaptive controller with your feet in place of those triggers. It's all about customization and choice, and making it so as many games on the platform are as accessible to as many people as possible. Copilot mode is one of those accessibility features that seriously comes with no drawbacks. It allows for games to be made infinitely more customisable, to be played in a wide variety of extra ways, and I wish every platform holder would take advantage of this, because it simply makes every game more accessible, whether the developer has made an effort to or not. The idea that Microsoft has implemented something on the system level that makes third-party games that have no accessibility features more accessible on their console that's the kind of steps we should be taking to make games more accessible. I mean, we should be expecting individual developers to make their games more accessible anyway, but like, until every developer gets on that train, system level console fixes are a wonderful step forward. Both Sony and Nintendo have system level button remapping on their current consoles, but Copilot mode is just a step further forward. It allows for a lot more customization of controls and a lot of additional ways to play games, and, you know, I'm not usually one for saying console manufacturers look at what your rivals are doing and just kind of steal it, but with accessibility support I think that's okay to say. Sony and Nintendo look at what Microsoft is doing with Copilot mode and find a way to do that yourself, because right now, in many ways Microsoft is the most accessible place to play third-party games, even if they're coming to your systems as well, and you could do with learning from them, you could do with being accessible in this same way. That's a good thing for everyone. <laughs>